and shame will imprison you. It will hold you hostage to your worst day, your worst sin. It wants to lock you into your worst self and keep you there. It will remind you that you are unworthy. It will remind you that you are incapable. It will tell you that you are unredeemable. The enemy uses guilt and shame to put you into a prison of insecurity and pain. Guilt is feeling bad about what I've done, while shame is feeling bad about who I am. Guilt and shame began in the very beginning in the garden. You see, they're both a result of sin. When Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit and rebelled against God, they immediately noticed that they were naked. Nakedness is associated with shame over our sin. After Adam and Eve realize their nakedness, they do three things. One, they hid from God. Two, they tried to make coverings to cover their nakedness. And three, they shifted the blame to someone else. If you're walking in guilt and shame today, you may be doing the same thing. Do you hide from God? Do you find it hard to pray? Do you avoid going to church? Do you put off reading the word of God? Are you trying to cover up the nakedness of your sin with all kinds of righteous and good deeds? Do you find yourself critical of others? You see, fig leaves didn't cut it for Adam and Eve and they don't cut it for us. God had to shed the blood of an animal in order to clothe them. The Bible tells us that Jesus, the Lamb of God, shed his blood for you and for me in order to cover our nakedness of our shame, of our sin, so we could walk in right relationship with him and right relationship with one another. Hebrews 12, 2 tells us this, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You no longer have to walk in sin because Jesus has taken your shame and has given you his righteousness. In fact, this verse goes one step further in telling us that Jesus despised the shame. That doesn't tell us how Jesus felt about the shame. That passage is telling us what Jesus did to the shame. That literally means that he condemned the shame that used to condemn you and me. Colossians 2 tells us this, Christ disarmed the accusations against us and has made a public spectacle of them all. You don't have to cover up for your sin, your guilt, or your insecurities. Confess them to Jesus and let him cover them with his blood. You don't have to avoid God. You don't have to cover up your insecurities. You don't have to be afraid and critical of others. Let Jesus set you free.